Bikini wax ban crackdown on female beauty treatments in Iranian holy city. Recently, the Women's Hairdressers Union in the city of Mashhad, Iran, announced a ban on the waxing of private parts, tattoos, piercings, injecting Botox, and other cosmetic subdermal fillers, nail enhancements, eyelash extensions, quote-unquote unconventional dress code, and playing Western music at the salons. Other women's hairdresser unions have announced similar bans across the country after being threatened with legal actions for non-compliance. Many attribute this restrictive measure to the many hardliner clerics that live in the holy city of Mashhad and are notorious for their efforts to police women. The Iranian government is known for its long history of controlling women's dress codes. Syed Ahmad uh, Alamol Hoda a senior Islamic cleric in Mashhad and father-in-law to the current president, Ibrahim Raisi, urged people to admonish women with quote-unquote poorly fitting hijab, going so far as to say that they should not feel secure. This is not the first time salons have been threatened with legal actions from the government. Back in 2015, there was a crackdown on men's styles. Homosexual and devil-worshipping hairstyles were banned, along with tanning, tattoos, and plucked eyebrows all of which were deemed un-Islamic. I don't understand. Okay, I think I know my Islam more than Alam al-Huda, okay? Because there's no way, there's absolutely no way that waxing private parts, okay? I'm going to defend Islam here, okay? <laughs> this is, Let's go for it. There's no way that it's Islamically haram for you to wax your private parts because it's it's in the name it's your private parts like it's not you know it's not the part that people are going to see in public so there is no way that this is haram for you to do i don't not only it's not haram like seriously these people are getting it's, it's hard to be more ridiculous than islam but these people are managing to be more ridiculous than islam okay you know, I I don't usually defend Islam here, okay? But in Islam, you're told that you could do things that sexually arouses your husband, okay? So why would they ban this? Like, if a wife wants to go, if your husband likes it waxed, and you should, why they're banning these places from waxing? I mean, it's a woman waxing you, so what the hell is wrong with that? And you're doing something that is Islamically prescribed for you to do. You're like, my husband likes this. Like, why, why is this illegal? Islam tells you to do the things that your husband likes. So why can't a woman go get the wax? I get understand. Like, what the hell? I this mean, I don't understand I either, but that's actually fascinating commentary. I hadn't thought about that. I mean, there are some people who are like next level hardcore where they do not allow you to change like any physical parts of your body because that is altering Allah's creation. But at the same time, they'll also advocate for female genital mutilation, so it doesn't make any sense. No, that's not. Yeah, that's not. That's not. That's 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 your Christian nonsense. Islam doesn't have like. I mean, Muhammad literally dyes his beard. Like, if you want to mess with that, why are you dyeing your hair? Like, you know, red. Okay. They have a good you could, point. You could cut your hair. You could cut your. I don't know. Um. You're supposed to grow the beard, but cut the mustache. Yeah, we have had. We I've seen seminars. That's hair removal. I've I've seen seminars in Iran by hijabi like religious women telling other women. I've literally seen videos of this. Like maybe your husband would like you to dress up as like an as a pilot or like a nurse, and you could you should do that, right? Oh um, my gosh! Yeah, like they were like they were teaching this in an Islamic setting, but because it's in private, they're like yeah, like that's not oh, bad. Wow. You know, like they wow, have wow, like wow. Yeah, they have they, in Iran. You could go buy BDSM stuff. It's not um, you could go buy like you know cuffs and ropes and all those that stuff. Well, yeah, because... but you wouldn't think someone in the seminary is like openly like advocating for that. That's fascinating. Yeah. Okay, but the, okay, so that like was low they key they, sex they... positive. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, the thing is that they're sex positive. They're sex negative and sex positive. Okay, they're mm -hmm. sex negative because they're like oh it has to be in a traditional marriage and stuff but once it's in a traditional marriage and it's in a private area 
they're like, there's not that much limitations on what you can do other than maybe you can do anal or you can do, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you are allowed to do oral, uh, but, but you could go like kinky. I don't, but I, I don't understand any of this. I think this is more of a power play mm -hmm. than I Islam. You know what I mean? This Alam al Hoda, he's like a major competitor right now to Khamenei for, mm -hmm. when it comes to supreme leadership. Uh, Puya is here. Puya could confirm this. Um, yeah, Puya. He's, Puya, he's saying, Puya yeah, is, I saw that. It was basically a fetish workshop. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, Puya, from, Puya is also Iranian. He's confirming the video that I said. Like, it was a fetish workshop, but Islamic. Like, a hijabi woman t telling other hijabi women what to do to their husbands, okay? But it's just understanding is, like, yeah, you get to do this, but only in private and only to your husband. You know, you can't mm -hmm. do this to your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. There is no such a thing. You can't even hold hands with your boyfriend. You shouldn't even have a boyfriend. OK, so it is True. close. I'm not defending it. All You know, I'm not defending it, but I'm just saying it's not. This is not. This is nowhere in Islam says that you can't do these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, mm -hmm. In Islam, it says you can't do these things and sh uh, in public. Like you can't display these things to other men. Like eyelash extensions, you're allowed to do that. You can allowed to do all of these things. Well, with the with the fake nails, like you're not supposed to have nail polish to do your ablutions to do wuzu. What is that yeah. real? Nail polish is haram. Okay, but you okay? So no, nail polish is not haram. Even if what you're saying is true. So you're saying okay? So you know for, more about for, this than for I do. For prayer, you can't have it on for prayer. Yeah, but you could wipe it off and then do your ablution and then you put put it back on again. Mm -hmm. So I didn't actually know this. I'm learning something from you. So the water has to touch. I thought the water has to touch your all the all over your skin. I didn't know it has to touch your nails. So oh, you're yeah. saying nail polish. Okay, so you're saying the nail polish because ma it makes the water not be able to touch your nails. That's the reason why they're against nail polish. But well, what if a lot you of women also have to go barefaced. They have to take all their makeup off to do mm -hmm. their prayers as well. I don't know if everyone does that, but I know a lot of women, Muslim women do do that. Because, like, hijabi makeup girls make jokes about how they did a full face of makeup and then realize that they have to do it. So, like, um, yeah, wait, but can you translate this post? Oh, Puya, I say I'm not just an Iranian. I'm also from Mashhad. So, oh, hey, Puya has, like, in the house, direct represent. <laughs> yeah. um, can you scroll down and translate this post from Masiya Linajad? I love yeah, the so this picture is, that she posted the lady's face like <laughs> yeah so this is Elamul Huda and, and he's like he looks like okay so if you want to remember this guy he's basically Islamic like Santa, Santa. Claus he yeah, looks Islamic happier Santa. than most of the other clerics at least and he's a Sayyid though. you could tell you could tell he's a Sayyid right you you know how of course you know, his, right? his, yeah, his, okay. his imam mind is okay. black yeah okay so guys if you see the the turban if it's white He's not a Sayyid, but if it's black, it means that he's a Sayyid. That means he's a descendant of, I, 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 they claim that they, he's a descendant of Prophet Muhammad. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's how you could tell after, okay. Um, oh my God. I have to translate all of this. Okay. Maybe not uh, all of it. He said, Fatima Salazade, Raisa, Tahadia, Arish, Garan, is an anonymous Hazem, Taide, Blochim, and so. Oh, my, this is too long. Baino Tahadia, that Robert Tiba, Amele Barkim, Amnator, Solazi, Bayo Sharmuk. Okay, so this woman, this official woman said, um, from a Solago, the Shetar, Mamnuyat, Barkas, Korazi, Bayo, Arish, Gray, Mashabatasha. Like this has, this was a long time coming. This has been discussed for a while. Uh, for this reason, some of this, some of these bands. Um, okay, this is just a formal declaration of why they're putting these bands and they have the discussion. Mm. Yeah, it's not that. Yeah, it's basically the things you said. Okay. Uh -huh, uh, uh, wait, wait. Uh, at the very end, he said, like, why? Okay. They said that why would the, in the city of Imam Reza, so for people who don't know, this city, Mashhad, is a city, is one of the most religious cities in Iran. Uh, which is a city where the shrine of um, the, uh, the eighth Imam of Shias are, or like Imam Reza. It's one. Of, it's the only uh, from the twelve uh, Imams. It's the only shrine that is within the borders of Iran. So it's only it's the only Shia shrines. All the major ones are in Iraq. 
Um, so that's that means a lot of Iranians don't have access to it. So this is very significant because it's a it's a, one of the twelve shrine, um, shrines that is within Iranian borders. So it's very significant for them. So they're saying, why would we why would we allow women walk around with nail polish and epilation? What is epilation? Oh, epilation. Mm. Epilation is, is a way of removing hair. It's like threading, kind right. of. It's like, why would we allow? Um, Nails, fake nails, and epilation. Epilation. Um, epilation in the city. <laughs> epilation of, of is how you say it in English. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, why would we let? Why, why would we allow fake nails and epilation in the city of Imam Reza? Like they're like these two judges don't go with each other. That's what they're saying. By the way, guys, this is a major power play. Um, there's there, right now. There's three uh, candidates three, that we could think of for who's going to be the su next supreme leader of Iran. If there's anyone other than the three, like that's like would be am amazing because we can't think of anyone else. It's either Raisi, the current president, or Mushtaba Khamenei, which is the son of um, Ali Khamenei, who's the current supreme leader, or this San this this Iran Santa Claus, right? Um, Alam al Huda, which is the main the main guy in the city of Mashhad. He's the most holiest person, in, and he's the father-in-law of Raisi, which is the current president. Okay, so some like sometimes these bands uh, are not about Islam; they're about showing authority, showing that you could have laws put in place that are separate from the laws coming down from somewhere else, like ex exerting, you know. Um, displaying your authority and putting it up for display for people to see how much of an influence you have or just making noise so for more people to be against you and more people to come in defense of you against the people who are criticizing you and causing tension and rallying up your base okay so this is a huge display of power but this guy i think if that's what he's doing he needs to be careful because um, so far, everybody who um, had challenged Khamenei for power has been eliminated. And I'm not saying eliminated as in they are they don't have power anymore. I mean, physically, like they have been, they ha they're dead. They be dead. Okay. So it's a very it's a very dangerous game that this man is playing, and he has to be careful. But he has, from all the candidates. That could be the supreme leader. This man has the most dedicated uh, following, you know. So the other ones have more political power, but this guy has more religious authority. This this man has much um, much more religious following and religious authority to the two other candidates. So that's mm -hmm. why he, he he you need to keep an eye on him. I think he has more religious authority than Khamenei himself. Khamenei himself, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. To be honest. Abdullah Samir is here. Hey. <laughs> he's saying everyone and their uncle is a Syed. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, yes. go subscribe to the friendly ex-Muslim on YouTube if you would like to, some great ex-Muslim content. Content. It is a little bit. It's a different flavor than what we do here. I, I, we love Abdullah. Um, yes. In fact, not only different. we have ex-Muslim Syeds. Do you know who our Syed is? Muhammad Syed. No, Ali Rizvi. I'm... Ali Rizvi is a Syed. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh really? What well, is yeah. Muhammad Syed also a Syed? I don't know, but okay, it, okay. Uh, Razib Khan genetically confirmed that Ali Rizvi is a Syed, like oh, okay, legit. Okay. I don't think <laughs> you, <laughs> I don't think you can confirm that. Okay, um, it's all made. Well, up. guys, go check up. out the Secular Jihadist episode where Razib and uh, Ali talk about like genetics and also being a Syed, all this stuff. I'm by the way. Um, I'm an uh, I'm also a descendant of Muhammad, but I'm not a Sayyid because my grandmother was a Sayyida, which means mm. a female Sayyid, a, f a female who who's born from a Sayyid. So technically, I'm also a descendant of Muhammad, but it doesn't count because the woman in it's your maternal. family, the, yeah, it doesn't pass it down through the female members of your family. But if you add up all the people who are also a descendant of Muhammad, but they're not called a Sayyid because some their mother or their grandma was a Sayyida. 
then everybody is a Sayyid. Like, you know, you, you know, almost everybody becomes a Sayyid. Well, yeah, I guess. Anyways, I'm a descendant of the Prophet. And also, Queen Elizabeth is yes. also a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad, apparently, as well. So She's there you go. Sayyidah. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, is the real <laughs> love jihad. <you, God. laughs> true, true. Um, yeah, guys, definitely go check out the channel, uh, the friendly ex Muslim. Some really great content. I, I, I learned a lot from Abdullah. Yeah, he's like the sweetest man. Yeah, hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.